Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. I have three wines in front of me from Croatia, a rosé and two reds. Uh, you may have seen I did a, um, a video quite recently which had seven uh, Croatian whites in and I really enjoyed them. Um, let's see whether I enjoy these. So um, we first one we've got is a Roksanic uh, and it says rosé 2008. Fine wine. Not sure of the great varieties here, uh, but um, I might as well just dig in and uh, tell you what I think of it. So here we are in the middle of 2012. Um, is 2008 too old for a rosé? Well, I stick my nose in here and it's one of those rosés that has um, aspirations of grandeur about it. And uh, it's uh, just judging by, uh, there is a little bit of um, a haze in the bottom of the bottle. Uh, it's been bottled, unfiltered, um, and it's starting to put down a deposit. And I stick my nose in there and it's got this warm, sweet, strawberry richness about it, um, as if it's been made uh, very, well, I hesitate to use the words natural wine, but um, uh, it doesn't feel like anyone's fannied about with it, for want of a better term. Um, and um, it smells it's going to be it's going to be warm welcoming this the slightly perfume what's good about it in term, in natural wine terms uh, it smells like the fruit uh, has not lost um, its perkiness maybe it's lost a bit of its youthful freshness and so it's not it's more uh, getting more onto the cooked fruit edge than the fresh fruit edge but it's still out and out fruity well, the, with its soft, sweet, strawberry allure, there's something almost Burgundian about that. Soft, gentle, um, caressing, uh, warm, soothing, not high-class burgundy maybe, uh, but uh, something that's, that's gentle and mature and, uh, yeah, really quite nice. And then uh, there's this more, more, more spicy, spiky edge that comes in there, as if someone's taken uh, southern Rhone grapes, or one of those slightly odd ones like Cunois, um, and uh, or maybe a bit of Carignan, uh, no, not Carignan, uh, and, and, and dumped a little bit in there just to uh, add a little bit of spice and life to it. Um, so as it is, um, it, it's weird. I mean... It, as I said, a, a four-year-old rosé, but still has got this fruit freshness about it. It doesn't feel like there's anything there that makes me uh, want to uh, drink it very quickly. Um, also, considering the way in which it is ageing, it makes me think that um, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, a couple of years from now, maybe even five years from now, it's still hanging on in there and looking uh, maybe even more Burgundian. Uh, I've only got this one bottle. Maybe I need to go out and find another one and, uh, uh, and shove it away and, uh, and see what will happen. But for the moment, I find it a fascinating, rounded, uh, juicy and alluring wine. Yes, like that. Next one, uh, Picentum Rouge, uh, it just says 9 on there, I'm presuming it means 2009, um, and uh, can't help you with what the grape varieties are on here, uh, they have uh, some ones, uh, I mean I think the main red grape in uh, Croatia is Plavak Mali, uh, and then there's another one called Teran, and then they've got a few uh, things like Rifosco, which they've got over the border in Italy, um, and I think that features in the next one, but can't help you with what's in here, let's just taste it and see where we get to. Well, it's got that spicy, floral, um, perky, peppery freshness that I associate with... Um, well, there's two, two styles of wines that, 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 that spring to mind. Um, uh, one of them... Actually, I'm... Oh, golly, I've got too many analogies here. There's a bit of um, perky Loire. There's a bit of... Um, there's a bit of Beaujolais in there, uh, and then there's a bit of Cote de Rhone, and then there's also a bit of Dolcetto in there. Uh, so it's almost like the, uh, all of those things, uh, what they have in common, if they're good, is they have um, lots of fruit, juiciness, uh, freshness, spice, bounce, life, vitality. That's what I get here. Um, don't think, uh, I don't know whether they've, they've used any oak here. Uh, don't, I don't find, find any big oak, uh, big oak influence coming on. When I say big oak, I mean uh, like a barry that's had too much smoky vanilla flavours. Wouldn't be surprised if it had been aged in oak, but quite big old oak, uh, which has uh, rounded and softened those flavours slightly, but not too much. It still feels like it's going to be perky and um, um, fresh and, uh, and sort of go, hello, 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 and pest you. But I better taste it first. And I really like that peppery richness. Um, it's one of those, the red wine um, it has, over the past 20 years, got less and less refreshing. I'm lo I, 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 one thing I thank the natural wine movement for um, is bringing back the idea of freshness in red wines. Here, uh, there's this juiciness, there's this bounce, of vitality, um, and um, yeah, almost, not, not quite a wine that you chill maybe, but one that thanks to that acidity, thanks to that freshness, 
uh, thanks to, and I think there's maybe a little bit of carbon dioxide in there just to add further freshness. Um, it's, um, it, it's just looking really tasty and juicy and quaffable. Do like that. Um, next one. Final one. Um, this is uh, from the Clay Clay Winery, C L A I, and it's uh, Otto Cento, um, and it's a blend. I think the blend is it's got Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot and uh, Refosco in. Not sure how much of each, but um, it weighs in at um, first of all heavy bottle, uh, and then 15.2 percent alcohol. So not a shy wine. I stick my nose in there and it's this very, very rich, uh, verging on the port um, and there's this meaty edge, uh, the, there's, there's that, that Britannomyces edge, uh, there's uh, plush vanilla pudding in there, um, there's warm brown sugar. I, it's a, it, it is a style of wine that um, appeals to some. It doesn't appeal to me. I want, I want more wines in that fresher mould. Well, first one, like 12.9%. This is like more than 2% higher. This one feels like it's, um, it's for people who measure quality of food by how the on the plate. Yeah, it's a, not a style of wine I want to encourage, actually. Um, it's, um, it's big, it's powerful, uh, but um, when I look, at, uh, I, I, I look at it as a wine, I find the fruit too ripe. I, I find that Brett is drying out the pleasure. I, I think that if you, you drink it now, it's peak. I think the Brett will um, t continue to strip away the nuances as it, as it ages. I've, I've tried aging wines that seem, for me seem to have been made in a similar profile and uh, with very little success. Um, I, I miss some freshness in there. I miss the perkiness and the life that was in the middle one. Uh, I miss the freshness of fruit that was in the first one. Um, and um, so I, I'm, I'm very interested to see. I'm, I'm taking. I'm going along and uh, tasting it uh, with with some other people later on tonight uh, in a couple of hours' time. So it'll be interesting to see first of all how it's um, how it's evolved over those two hours, uh, and secondly to to see how it goes down with us uh, with another set of people. As I say, for me, not a style I want to encourage. I'd much rather drink uh, the uh, the first style and encourage people to make that fresher, perkier, livelier style than something that's just a bit foddy and heavy. Uh, so um, maybe not the uh, the best wine on which to finish, but uh, first the first two were pretty good. So um, maybe go out and uh, try and find those. See you soon.